Madhouse Podcasting Network. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest with me. I actually met him at a Halloween Depot one day. Uh, he's a great, great Michael Myers cosplayer and um, does it really spot on. Please welcome my guest. You could find him on TikTok, Michael Myers underscore The Shape. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Much love. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. So you had a great, uh, a great season on top of even before that I mean going into uh, you know the summer of 2021 going to all these uh, Halloween depots showing up at Awaken the Spirits cosplaying as the shape himself uh, leading into the big premiere of Halloween Kills um, and then not only that working Halloween Horror Nights which of course this year they had brought back Halloween for the return of Michael Myers uh, how was it all going into the summer leading into haunt season, man? It must have been a busy, busy season for you. Oh, yeah. Um, it was definitely a busy season. Um, it's funny, too, because, like, I didn't find my niche until midsummer. And uh, after that, so, like, the way that happened is uh, I ended up bumping into my buddy, Twisted Pennywise. I was like, all right, cool. So with that said, I was like, you know what? My favorite horror killer is Michael Myers. So let me start doing something with that. So that's when I started going out as Michael Myers, going to Halloween Depot, all of that. And then once Halloween Horror Nights hit, I was like, awesome, we're having it this year. Because last year, it was it was literally disappointing. And um, the only haunt I did last year during COVID was um, the Los Angeles Haunted Hayride, which was held in San Dimas instead of Griffith Park. And um, it was like a drive-in movie theater for guests. Right. And we would go around the cars and scare people, which was interesting. But this year when we had Halloween Horror Nights again, I was like, all right, let's go for it. Let's do this. Yeah. So I was really excited. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of fun, man. I mean, Halloween Horror Nights this year, great event, had a great time. Um, talk to us about uh, when you first took interest in scare acting, man. Because obviously for you – the persona of Michael Myers is a year-round thing. You like to go out and, and cosplay as it and bring it to life year-round, which because of people like you, we, we enjoy ourselves a lot. Um, tell me when you first started getting into the cosplay game and when you first wanted to do scare acting, man. Uh, cosplay, to be honest, I never knew about it. Um, I've seen pictures online, Instagram, all of that. Um, but what I liked, to do is if I wanted to become a certain character I tried to go as close as possible of what they wore in the movie or in a TV show and the way I got into scare acting is I went as a guest to Halloween Horror Nights from 2007 and from then on every year I went up to probably around like 2015-2016 and when I got to that year, especially in 2013, I started auditioning for it for Halloween Horror Nights at uh, U.S. Hollywood. And every single audition I went to, I did my best. I did my best. But I never got the callback. Um, somehow, some way in 2017, when I went to uh, Monster Palooza in, in Pasadena, I ran into John Murdy from the years I went place call on your Bluetooth phone. Um, when I went to um, Horror Nights and I met John Murdy. Hold on, we just lost. So, it. there we go. Oh, okay. So yeah, um, I I met John Murdy throughout the years as a guest. So when I met him during Monster Palooza in 2017, I was like, hey, so 
how does this process work? Like I've been auditioning since like this year and he's like, just do it one more time. Trust me, you'll get it. If you're having the dedication for it, you'll definitely get it. So in 2017, when I finally auditioned for the, like the last year, he had John Murdy himself, the creative director for Halloween Heart Nights was in the room during my audition. And I have a big feeling when I left that room, he saw me and remembered me and probably was like, I talked to that kid during Mossapalooza and he's been auditioning for this long. Take him in this year. He might do good. So when I auditioned, came out of the room, they came out with gold cards. That's what we call them, golden tickets. <laughs> they, called, they, called, they called my number and I got super excited. Went on my Instagram, went on Facebook, played the... I have the golden ticket from the <laughs> Chaka Factory, Factory yeah. man. And I was excited. And that was my first year going into scare acting. And I had a lot of fun. Right. Uh, 2017, man, a, a great solid year at Halloween Horror Nights. Um, what was the position you were put in for Halloween Horror Nights? So in 2017, um, same as this year, I started in pool. And um, what's the, the funny thing about it is, uh, on employee preview night, I didn't get a role. So we were splitting groups of fives with people who didn't have roles, and we got to experience every maze and scare zone they had. On opening day, the same thing was about to happen, but then one of our casting directors was on the phone, and I was about to go home, of course, getting paid at the same time still. Um, I was on the, uh, she was on the phone, walked up to me, and on the phone, she was like, how does Krikor work? Which is my name. I was like, wait, what? And then she hangs up the phone and she goes, all right, you're going to Toxic Tunnel. <laughs> so I go to Toxic Tunnel, first night, opening night, had a blast. The cast was great. The cast was awesome. The very next day, I was like, do you have a permanent role? I would like to stay in that in 20, 2017. And they were like, you sure? I'm like, yes. So the very next day, second day of open, opening night, they were like, all right, you're going to Toxic Tunnel. Congrats. Nice. And throughout that season, I had a blast. I scared people. I had fun with people. It was amazing. I, I yeah. probably I probably seen you one of those nights, man, because I, I, I remember walking through that Toxic Tunnel and going to the back lot. That's I, I did miss it a lot this year. Um, simply one of my favorite uh Moments of Halloween Horror Nights every year, walking through that tunnel, going to the back lot, seeing the iconic King Kong building right there, and seeing the iconic back lot, and all it's all decked out for Halloween Horror Nights. One of my favorites, man. That's awesome. Uh, Toxic Tunnel, obviously, I did, like I said, missed it this year, especially in in 2019 when they when they threw like some punk rock music and and you know, um, uh, psychobilly and all that, which I really liked. So yeah, Definitely. man, I love Toxic Tunnel. One of my favorites. 2018, man. Yeah, uh, you get the spot in uh, Toxic Tunnel 2017, 2018. You come back. Uh, what are you What are you doing for 2018? 2018. So 2018, I actually got put in a maze. And the funny thing is, we had the same maze that we had this year, which was Halloween Four. So I got to be original Michael. Um, the scares were the best. I definitely liked being at the final two scares. Um, I had a lot of drops, a lot of crawlouts. Being Michael in 2018 was the best. And um, what's funny, that year I requested to go back to Toxic Tunnel for one day. Um, and I think the reason why they kept on bringing Toxic Tunnel back for three years was because of 2017. The cast of 2017 is what made Toxic Tunnel come back for 2018 and 2019. Um, but yeah, 2018, when I got the role as Michael, I was like, oh, heck yeah. That's pretty dope because I get to be one of my favorite horror killers. And then the coolest thing was I remember every single drops I got at Final Scare because we had these two pop outs where like it was completely dark. No one saw us. All we had to do is press the trigger, pop out with our prop knives and just get those scares. And I remember the, we have two Final Scares. So the first one we called Final Scare 1. And I remember this clearly. This woman walks through the curtains. I press my trigger, pop out. She throws her hands up, drops down, and crawls out of the maze. And I go on break, 
and the Michael that was in the final scare too comes up to me. He's like, did you see a woman crawling out? I was like, mm-hmm. yeah. And he was like, I couldn't stop laughing. Was that you? I was like, to be honest, yep, that was me. Yeah, <laughs> she just dropped on the floor and crawled out. I was like, that was me. And he started laughing his ass off. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's hilarious, man. I, I love hearing stories of, of people dropping to at haunts because it, it is so funny to watch that happen, especially in a maze when it's even more tight spaced and stuff and and having to get out of that that's that's hilarious man yeah halloween 4 in 2018 was a solid maze too and it was cool to see it come back in in 2021 because they did change like the ending and whatnot which was really cool um to see all that come to life um going into 2019 man uh your third year what what do we what do we see from you there so 2019, I got put in a scare zone called All Hallows Evil, which was in the Metro sets, right next to um, the second, I guess you could say, Frankenstein versus the Werewolf. Yeah. Uh, music done by Slash and also Ghostbusters. And um, of course, uh, uh, what was, was the other one? Creep the show? one? The Creep Show. There we go. To me, that scare zone wasn't didn't really feel like a scare zone it was mostly like an outdoor maze uh i got to play as a druid which to me the first time hearing that character and seeing the pictures i was like what the hell is a druid yeah and then i had to ask a lot of my scare captains all of that they're like oh he's like an undead priest just try to do your best you could until a couple of nights we played around and we started going behind like the statues that they had there I I hid behind like Hello? these um, ghillie suit wall blockings oh, and like okay. I I'm got scared. Right so it was pretty good. That year was like kind of the best year I had also because when I was in that scare zone, that's when I started scaring celebrities that came through. Nice. So I remember, I remember one of the nights um, Eli Roth came through oh. and I recognized them. Yeah, so I recognized him. I went up to him and with a creepy voice. I know we're not we're not allowed to talk, but with a creepy voice, and I get people like this all the time. I just went up to him. I was like, Eli. And then when I said that, he's like, this guy knows my name. I'm going to the next room. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, scaring a lot of celebs that year was pretty fun. And um, the coolest thing is, even during 2019, I requested to be in... Um, the killer clowns are out of space maze. When I got into that maze, it was, I believe third or second to the last day. And my last 15 minutes, I remember this. And hopefully if Billy Eilish sees this, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was the last 15 to 10 minutes. And, um, half of the cast from other scare zones and other mazes came through, cheered me on all of that. I don't know where from like the second room to mine, I start hearing like this high pitched scream. I'm like, Ooh, I'm going to get this girl. I'm going to get the crap out of her. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to scare her until she drops. And then, so i got to play the, the fat slow clown and it was behind a tree. And apparently in that scare, there should have been a squirt gun like any other rooms, but I guess, it broke, so we had like this little tiny toy looking alien pistol. So I was behind a tree waiting for her to come through. All of a sudden, I see the curtains move. I see a woman walk through with someone bear hugging her from the back. I was like, all right, here we go. So I'm ready and all that. And I'm doing this. I'm like, come on, come on over, come on over. I press the trigger, pop out, and I just see the girl behind that woman try to drag her down, screaming her top of the lungs off. I was like, cool, yeah, scare, yeah. And then my vision, here's the funny thing about that mask, my my vision was through the mouth. So right. all I could see is like this much. <laughs> and then once I hit my trigger and like the lights effects went off and I saw who I scared, I was like, oh crap, that's Billie Eilish. <laughs> and, then my, my, and then my trigger, like my light effect went off. I was like, I'm going to get her a second time because she was still screaming her lungs off. So I even go closer until she goes to the next room. She just goes, no, no, no. <laughs> and, and I just, 
and my mask, I'm just like dying of laughter. I'm like, I just scared Billy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. So yeah, that was the best. Yeah, that was the best fight ever. Um, and then the very ending, the very last day, when I was when I went back to my scare zone, our supervisors like the last ten minutes, fifteen minutes, let us go out of our zone, and where people just walked through that middle section. Right. To go to the other mazes, right. we got to hang out there and scare people, That's cool. and that just made that just made the guest day because people got scared. People took pictures of us. We go, we took a group photo, and it was like the best ending night ever. Dude, so, not not yeah. only you know just hearing that that's cool. You got to scare Billy Eilish, man. I mean, uh, easily one of the biggest pop stars of our generation right now, um, and. Not only that, you got to scare her in one of my favorite all-time mazes, which was Killer Clowns from Outer Space. That way, that maze was just hella beautiful. I know exactly you were mentioning the story, and I knew exactly where you were, and because I've been through, I went through that maze so many times that year, and oh yeah. my god, that was one of my favorites. So kudos to you for uh, bringing that that world to life, man, because that was just a phenomenal world. But All Hollows Evil too, man. That was a solid scare zone. That was a lot of fun to go through. And that, that was one of the things I missed this year going into the back lot is, you know, that you get to go through that scare zone and then go through those three mazes. And then if you wanted to, just hang out there for a little bit. And it's a lot of fun to just hang out, chill, get something to eat, look at the merch and all Definitely. that. Um, but, yeah, man, a lot of fun. 2020, the pandemic happens, man. What do you do? How do you stay active with, you know, a, a, a pandemic going on and, and, and going over to uh, – Obviously, with no Horror Nights, what, where, do you, where do you go next? So, during the pandemic, what happened is I stayed at home. I stayed at home, tried to play it safe as much as possible. I started my TikTok the end of 2019 uh, and then just continued doing TikToks. Um, so, within, like, the TikToks I've done, I just did, like, random characters. I tried to, like, be Deadpool, but I had, looked like, this bootleg mask from like an Halloween store. Um, and then all of a sudden I started going to Hollywood because, um, I started seeing like these top notch TikTokers hanging out and dancing there. So I started going there, shooting behind the scenes for them. That's how my views start going up. That's how my followers start going up. And then come October, we hear, Oh, how hard nights is not happening. But, some odd reason one of my buddies contacted me and said hey uh los angeles on hayride is happening this year i'm like wait what and they were like yeah you should apply for it and audition for it i'm like all right cool so come october i do i go through the process and then i hear oh so instead of having it at the original place which was in griffith park they're having it in san dimas so I'm like, all right, cool. A little different, but it's the opposite way where I, where I usually go. Right. So I go there. Uh, they hire me as a scare actor, and then also they hire me as like um, almost like a security. So like when cars came in, I had to check the tickets, or like I had to lead them where they had to go. Uh, so a couple of nights, I scared people. Other nights, I was leading cars in to where they had to go uh, with those like light baton flashlights yeah. um so it was pretty interesting um i i also did get scares during that year um even though it was like a drive-in theater i got to be a puppeteer so i wore this like big pumpkin puppet oh. above me where it, where it got like strapped like a backpack on me and stuff like that so it was pretty interesting and also what i liked is i got to be like different cost like mass characters right. and like one of the, one of the props i really liked was this like gasoline jug with like shakers in it oh the th they call those every, the thunder jug right there man yeah the thunder jugs yeah so like my favorite part was using that and like what i would do uh when i see a guest getting scared in their own car i would pretend to put fuel on their car <laughs> and then be like do you have a match <laughs> give me a match or a lighter and they're like we don't have any and i'm like all right, you're no fun. And I just walk <laughs> off. And then when I would like slam it some more or shake it and get those scares, it was like the best moments ever. Like I even got scares during that haunt. And I was like, it, it was, it was, 
it was a great year last year as well. So I can't complain. Yeah, man. A hayride in 2020, a phenomenal thing. Only to find out that they put that on in a matter of weeks. Uh, so impressive that they can do something like that. Um, yeah, we went a couple times to that, and I, I had a, I had a blast every time I went. So you, you could tell me all these stories, and I will freaking be 100% <laughs> focused in because I, I, I had a really fun time at the hayride. But then 2021 rolls around, man. It's looking a lot better this year. You know, we had haunts come back. We had um, just everyone giving 110% out there. Talk to us because we know you had a, a pretty busy season. We actually saw get to uh, see you scare in uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre this year, which was one of the spots mm-hmm. you were at. But talk to us about the many different roles you got to play this year at uh, Halloween Horror Nights in 2021. Uh, so, yeah, in 2021... I was in a group called Pool, just like 2017. And um, the first few roles I got during opening week and during the second week was uh, Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw. And um, the first Leatherface I played as was like the old uh, woman Leatherface. And those scares were really cool. Uh, The one I really liked was when I... Um, if I'm correct, I was in like the sewing room where I had to sew face right. and I got to stand up and like shove the face in their like in guest faces and they're like, no, no. <laughs> and then my favorite leather face though, that I got to play was pretty face woman, woman leather face. Uh, the only reason why my favorite scare for that was both graveyard and final scare, final scare. The reason why is right before they exit, right when they turn that left, super dark. We just were on the top platform with our chainsaws. We were pressed the trigger and they would pop out. And the one interesting scare I remember getting, it was super dark. So I could barely see, but I could still see perfectly. All I see is one automatic wheelchair slamming against the wall and another one getting struck right next to it. <laughs> and they both, I'm just watching this in the dark and I'm like, okay, are they fine? Are they okay? And then I don't know where they're trying to like back out un- get like get themselves unstuck. So the second one that got stuck does a U-turn, like gets unstuck, turns around that corner, they leave. I'm like, all right. The second one though, the first one that hit the wall, I'm going to get them. So right when they get unstuck, they turn around, I press my trigger, I pop out, I scare them, and then all I see is zoom, and they just zip out of there. In my mind, and I I started laughing in my mask in the dark, in my mind, right when I saw that, I was like, Super Mario Kart? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and when I went on break, I went to the, the, the video monitors um, where the the woman or guy sits and check the video monitors for the security cams. I'm like, please tell me you saw that. They're like, which one? The two wheelchairs, final scare. I was like, yep. And we just rewatched that twice and busted out laughing together. <laughs> and I was like, that was the moment to remember that night. Um, the other uh, parts I played during 20, 2021, second week. So this year, my luck. I got trained to, uh, uh, to be scaring with a chainsaw. Right. Um, so, uh, during the first two weeks, they were like, you'll probably not get a chainsaw. You trained for it, but you probably will not get one. Plus all this COVID situations, all the vets coming back, they'll mostly pick like the vets who played chainsaws for previous years. Right. I'm like, all right, cool. No problem. At least I got trained for it. The second weekend on a Saturday, they're like, Hey, you get to be a demon cowboy in Terror Tram with a chainsaw. Nice. I was like, wait, what? All right, cool. So I get to go there, handle a chainsaw for the first night. Um, and in my in my point of view, I was I was uh, literally like, how should I say this? I was I wasn't nervous, but I had that butterfly in my stomach. But like at the same time, when I was scaring. I had that saw planted on my body like big time because I didn't want to hit guests by accident. I didn't want to mess up or anything. So during the, probably my third set in, I went out, I went on break Two of the supervisors that I know. And one of the saw captains, 
they were like, they came up to me. They were like, is it your first time with a saw? I was like, yeah. And, um, at the same time I was wearing like eye contacts and they're like, I don't know what it is, but it's your first time, but you're doing a great job. And I was, I was like, thank you. Thank you. Like I never got that praise before. Like I've trained for this my whole life, man. (laughs) Yeah. So they liked me. And then after that, uh, other nights, they kept on putting me back in Texas. But um, the third week, the third weekend, I started getting hurt um, in Texas. I started getting blisters, all of that. And I was like, I need a break. I do like that maze. I love that maze. I like the scares in it. But I was starting to get blisters. My hands were hurting. A couple of the hides, I ended up bumping up my shoulder because, like, it was narrow. Right. Um, so... I took a break and they were like, all right, we can put you in another maze. So they ended up putting me in Halloween four. Uh, the first night that I got put there, I was one of the UV Michaels at the very end. Right. And wow. right when that night was done, they were like, Oh, we do have an opening. Would you like to take it? So in my head, I was like, you know what? I'm probably not going to get another chainsaw roll. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Just give me the opening spot. What is it? They're like, you get to be bandage, Michael. I was like, nice. all right. Something new, Something right? Different. All right. Yeah. So took that spot. Very next day, every hide I had as bandage, Michael was awesome. Pure genius service station, which was the first part you enter the maze, pop out, get the scares, aggressive, all of that. Second spot was like the bang window that we had in that hallway. Right. Also got scares. Diner was my favorite spot because the way I would pop out is literally like the Michael from the movie. Mm -hmm. I would sidestep out with pressing the trigger and just plant my foot hard with the knife like this. And I would get drops, drop after drop after drop. And I'm like, all right, I love this. I'm sticking around. And it was like the best moment ever. Not to mention, dude, that iconic scene in the diner where the first time Loomis sees Michael Myers after so many years. I mean, as a Halloween fan, you must have just kind of lost it when you finally got to scare right there, man. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Like, I I mean, uh, I think if I'm correct, this was the Saturday before the very ending, like before Halloween, or it was like a week before. I got this one scare where this woman came through with a wheelchair someone was pushing her (laughs) and i pop out and i scare the guy with an afro he runs away the woman in the wheelchair freaks out just goes like this i go back in my hide but i peek out to see if she's okay all of a sudden from the monitors we have to see who's coming through i just see her stand up running away and the guy pushing the wheelchair just starts cracking up and pushing the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> so the very next day, um, we have an award ceremony on the very last day. And I got an award because of that. And they're <laughs> like, so yeah, this Michael scared the living daylights of this woman, but uh, she was in a wheelchair and a miracle happened. She got up and walked the rest of the maze and ran throughout the maze. And they, 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 they announced me that I was like miracle Michael Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> miracle Michael, man. That's great. Yeah. Oh man. That's hilarious. And yeah. Even like during the diner, the diner scenes where I got those good scares. I remember scaring Billy Eilish again one night. It was, I, I believe, the second second week to the last week. Um, I popped out, and I just looked up. I was like, who the hell is that tall-ass guy? <laughs> and I went, I went on break. When I went on break, half of the other Michaels, they were like, did you see Dwight Howard? I'm like, wait, what? Dwight Howard? That was him? They, I was like, damn, he's tall. <laughs> and, like, we, we have, like, we had, like, two other tall Michaels in the maze. Like, they were, like, skinny tall. Right. And I was like, dude, that guy was taller than you guys. And, <laughs> and I had to explain to them, like, the way he exited the diner room, he literally had to tilt his head like this and then go out. And I was like, damn, wow, tallest basketball player I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, man. No, 2021, great season, man. It was a great comeback and 110% given from every scare actor that I've seen at Halloween Horror Nights this year. Uh, such a fun time. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, your TikTok, uh, some of your Instagram adventures that we get to see a lot if you follow him, and much more. So stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, did you know that people think you're 20% more attractive than you think you are? Have a great day, you sexy son of a bitch. Mwah. And we are back. Uh, so your, your TikTok, your Instagram, man, it's something that uh, I enjoy looking at a lot. Um, your TikTok Thank especially, you. you get to go out there and just have so much fun uh, dressing up as Michael Myers and giving us a really fun uh, show to look at when we go to visit your TikTok page. Um, thank you. So the fun part about your TikTok page too, is you, you'll go into Hollywood and you'll just go and start it, what I like to refer to him as is he's the fun Michael Myers. He's the one that dances. He's the one that has fun with people. I've seen him interact with uh, kids and stuff and like at Halloween Depot and whatnot. And you have a great time with it. You just, you kind of, you just, you enjoy doing it. You love doing it. What, what is it that, that drives you to want to keep creating man? Um, I mean, what drives me is like, um, like my buddy that I made during the pandemic, which was Twisted Pennywise, when I saw his page, I was like, all right, he's bringing this clown to life outside of the movies, but he's creating fun with it. So I was like, I got to do this somehow as well. So like what motivated me is him. So I got, I was like, why not be Michael Myers myself and also do the same thing? So thanks to Twisted Pennywise, I can now do this as Michael. So instead of scaring people like Michael usually does, I get to go out there and have fun, dance, and show people like, yeah, Michael's a killer, but he can also have fun. Yeah, <laughs> for real. I mean, and you see, there's a couple of people on TikTok that I like watching that do Michael, but yours is is one of my favorites. But I got to ask you, have you ever seen the guy? Uh, he lives. Uh, his, his name is his account's name is Michael Myers of, of Decker or Decker or whatever. And he goes around hmm. with his, and his wife films all the videos and he just goes into like the most randomest places dressed as Michael Myers and his wife is just embarrassed all the time. Like, Oh yes. I seen that. I yeah. seen that. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. I remember the, the one video I saw where he goes to see Halloween kills and like, I guess like the movie managers were like, you can't wear that. And he's <laughs> like, Nope. Ignoring that. Buy me the popcorn, buy me the drink going in the movie watching as Michael Myers. <laughs> I was like, I was dying with laughter. I was like, yeah, he doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, he's he's doing him, man. I mean, I've seen some funny stuff, man. He he one time grabbed a ladder, went on the second story of a, of a of an office building, and it had like a ledge where he can stand out, and he was just looking in the window at people, and his wife was like, I've gotten phone calls about this. You need to get down right now and stuff. It was <laughs> just the stuff he does is hilarious, man, and, and they, they have oh, a good man. thing going, but – no, I, I really enjoy watching your stuff. One of the most recent ones that I, I remember watching was um, you were in uh, West Hollywood and you were kind of in the middle of dancing and then all of a sudden these guys see you and they start enjoying you and dancing too. Moments yeah. like that, man, how fun are they? They got to be like some of the funnest moments you get on camera. Oh, no. Um, those those moments, um, they're great. Uh, let's just say, even though they have more followers than me on TikTok, I got to message them and be like, Hey, look, this is what I do on TikTok. I dress as Michael and I would like to collab with you. So they literally were like, all right, we're going to be in Hollywood today. And I was like, all right, I'll be there soon. So when I go there, I meet them, shake their hands. This is me. This is my TikTok. Show them what, what I do. So, uh, right when I started filming that video, I was like, Hey, look, doing the thing. And then I started doing the dance and then out of nowhere without even me knowing, I just see my video later. One guy pops up from my left. The other guy comes up from a right. I was like, all right, this is, this, this really works, works. Out, man. Making new friends, man. Like, like, to be honest, like this pandemic had its ups and downs. And though it was the ups that I had was meeting TikTokers who are like much more famous than me. Right. And, uh, just meeting them in person, talking to them. 
they're just regular people like I am. And just to do those collabs with them, just to meet them up and just to hang out with them just made my whole pandemic even better. Um, at least I had something to do instead of being at my house and just being in four walls, doing nothing. I had fun going out and doing TikToks and dancing and doing all this stuff. So I, I had a blast. Yeah, man. And, you know, you brought up our friend, uh, that another friend that I got to meet over at uh, Halloween Depot this season, too, uh, Twisted Pennywise. Um, man, shout out to him, too. He just did a video with Terry Crews, man. That's that's huge, mm-hmm. man. I can feel the same that thing is next is going to be happening to you, man. Who are you going to be working with? Maybe, maybe you know, we talked a lot about Billie Eilish today, so, I mean, I wouldn't doubt hey, if you're in her, next, you know, I wouldn't doubt if you're in her next music video, you know? Heck, I'll be down. Heck, uh, to be honest, um... Uh, here's the thing. I went to I, my hobby. One of my hobbies is going to movie premieres, even before the pandemic happened. So um, I ended up going to the Eternals premiere. Oh, dude! By the way, oh, I, solid fucking movie. All right, I, I still got to go see it. <laughs> yes, go see it. Don't listen but, to the reviews. Solid movie. Yeah. So on the way out, all the exits, I ran into uh, Bella Porch. Nice. She's a, one one of the biggest famous TikTokers there, out there. So I'm like, all right, the next time I see her at an event, I definitely got to be like, hey, look, this is my TikTok. This is what I do. Would you like to collab? So my next, hoping my next collab would be with her. Nice. So that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. <laughs> Get you some Michael Myers on her, man. I mean, it, it's uh-huh. possible, man. It's possible. I, I have 100% definitely. faith in you. Now, you mentioned going to movie premieres and stuff. I get to see uh, if you if you follow you, if anyone follows you on, on Instagram, we get to see that side of you. Um You've met people in the likes of like John Cena recently for mm-hmm. when they promoted Suicide Squad. Um, you've gotten to meet. Uh, you went to the Halloween Kills premiere, which was uh, fun to watch. And you and you just mentioned you went to the Eternals premiere. You do a lot of these premieres. This is something that you love to do, a hobby you love to do. What's been the the best uh, interaction with celebrities you've had going to a lot of these premieres? And I know you uh, sometimes go out to the Jimmy Kimmel stuff too. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel does a lot of that kind of things too. What's been some of your best uh, interactions with celebrities? Uh, my best interactions would be the, the celebrities that take their time and they're humble to meet fans. I know there's a lot of those, like, gra- what we call as graphers where they get back to back graphing from celebrities and celebrities do get tired of that because some of them know at the very end, they're going to end up selling that on eBay or something just to make money off of them. Right. But like when those celebrities know that you're just a fan that wants to meet them and take pictures with them. They're always humble. They're always nice. And um, one of my best moments, literally, I would say, was back in 2019 when I went to the Avengers Endgame premiere. And that was my very best day ever because I finally got a selfie with Robert Downey Jr. The man. I was the The only one. Yeah, I was the only one that got a photo with him as well because... um, for us fans, for regular fans, they didn't have a fan pit, but they had a fan pit for those cosplayers that would cosplay for TikTok or like whatever they did back then. Right. And people were dressed up in costumes, all of that. So us regular fans were across the street yelling out, hey, uh, please let us in, like have a fan pit for us. And a couple of people out there held up a sign saying, avenge the fans and posted on Twitter. With that said, people on Twitter kept on re- retweeting that, retweeting that until like Disney people came out. They're like, all right, calm down. We're going to put you in a single file line. And we're going to put you in a fan pit. So that's what got us in. And then the one thing I remember is when Robert came over, what I started doing is putting up my phone on a video because some of them, they like to go fast. Yeah. So I had it on video when Robert came through. I was like, Robert, Robert, yelling his name out. I just want a photo. He looks up. I look up at my camera. He looks back down. I go back to my video. I go through it. I was like, all right, pause, screenshot. There it is. And I was like, yep, I got the selfie right there. Yeah. And after that, the, after that day, I go on YouTube and type in Avengers Endgame movie premiere because they had their own actual video of the premiere. Right. And this one last cosplayer, which, which was a chick, at the very end of those cosplayer fans, was right next to the doorway. They go in to the movie. 
And I remember this clearly when I watched that video, this girl that was cosplaying was like, Robert, can I please get a photo with you? And all I hear Robert saying, you could try and just walk straight in. I was like, damn, are you kidding me? Am I the only one that got a photo with him that nice. day? Nice. And I was like, damn, okay, let's go. Yeah. And yeah, that, like 2019, it ended well with that. Yeah, so, dude. I I'm mean, that, yeah. you're talking about the godfather of the MCU right there, man. Like the guy who started it all and and freaking ended it well with his career in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, mm-hmm. No one will ever be able to play that role any better than Robert Downey Jr., man. I, he is no Iron Man. Um, yeah. And that's awesome, man. No, I, I get to get – the fortunate part of, of following you on, on Instagram and TikTok is I get to see a lot of that, uh, a lot of the stuff you do. And uh, over here, I'm over here like at work, and I'm like, damn, this guy is over there, and I want to meet John Cena, and, you know? But no, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun watching you get to get to see that, man, and, and to, to, put the, to put your own time on the line and just to go out there and do kind of stuff. That's a good hobby that you have, and – it's a hobby Thank that you. you enjoy doing, which is always the most important thing. Um, man, it has been quite the season. It has been quite the year. We've gotten – this was the first year. We, like I said, we met the first year at Halloween Depot. Um, it was you, uh, Twisted Pennywise, and, of course, the uh, Art the Clown cosplayer who does an amazing Art the Clown. Um, and you guys, as a trio, are always together um, knocking out some great pictures and whatnot. I have to say, though, dude, Every time I see you, I think you are the most spot-on Halloween cosplayer that I have ever seen. Um, not to mention, you just got the Halloween Kills uh, mask. You want to show that off a little bit, man? Because that thing is dope as hell. Yes, I do. So, uh, here's the backstory. When I bought this mask, it was during Midsummer Scream. It came as stock, like how they would sell it. And... I have this makeup artist from Halloween Horror Nights who rehauled my 2018 mask. With that said, I also gave this mask to her. She she rehauled it for the first time. It was kind of too dark until like movie photos of the movie mask came out. So I gave it to her again and she made it even better. And by that saying, this is how the mask looks like. The final product right um, there. The nice burn on this side, the scars, the and bloody the cheek yep. and the cut. Yep. And when I put it on, oh man, it looks like I came straight out of the movie. Look at this. It's Michael right there, man. Yep. Yeah. I love it. I love and it. And then of course I also have to put the contact lens in to make my left eye go blind. Yep. Other than that, I'm all set. <laughs> all set man if you ever catch him out at halloween depot or any like horror haunt event that uh you know has a lot of cosplayers and whatnot and if you see him uh definitely stop him and get a picture with him because he like i said is one of the greatest michael meyer cosplayers i've ever seen out there and i'm fortunate enough to call him a friend so definitely go check uh his stuff out uh michael myers underscore the shape on instagram and on tiktok Follow him, uh, show him some love because it, it's a pleasure watching you work. It's a pleasure seeing you do it in person, and it's just a freaking absolute pleasure getting to know you as a person. So it's a lot of fun. We've been actually talking about this podcast since Awaken the Spirits in August, man, and we're finally doing it. And I'm just happy to get to talk with you again, man, because you know I you know. and I, you and I have very busy schedules. So when we can actually pause a little bit and and hang out and and do stuff like this, it's a lot of fun, man. Definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. So definitely go check him out on Instagram and TikTok. Michael Myers underscore the shape. Go check him out. Go follow him. Tell him Knights of Horror sent you, man, because we're going to blow this guy up, man. I want to see this guy get to the hundreds of thousands and then eventually to the millions, man. So I'm excited uh, to see what you have to do uh, in the off season. We have a lot of stuff coming up for, for the uh, end part of 2021. And a ton of mm-hmm. stuff coming in 2022. Hopefully, we get to see you back at Halloween Horror Nights again in the 2022 season. I'm excited, man. I hope you're excited. Definitely. Looking forward to it, man. It's going to be a good year. Heck yeah. The one thing I had to, I do have to say to your viewers, if you do see me as Michael and you have a TikTok yourself, feel free to ask me to collab. Let's there it go. Is. I'm down. Getting the word and out then, there, man. Yep. And then another thing. I'm hoping next year, hopefully, crossing fingers, they bring Halloween 2018 as a maze, but they mix in a little bit of Halloween kills at the end so we get hyped up for Halloween ends. Yes. 
I, I am 100% on board with that for sure, man. Well, because we invited you on a Scaractor Appreciation Month, man, we want to say thank you and we appreciate all the hard work and dedication you put into uh, Halloween Horror Nights this season. Uh, you got to do multiple roles this season and ending it out with your favorite, Michael Myers. Uh, a lot of ton of fun, uh, ton of fun stories this year, and I loved hearing all of them, man. I can't wait to see what you uh, do in the 2022 season. And uh, again, anytime you want to come back on, you just let us know. We're only a DM away. We'll man. do. We're only a DM all away. All right, definitely, man. Yes, Thank man. you so much. Yeah, no problem, man. All right. We with all that being said, guys, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, hit that like button and with that subscribe button and that bell notification be where every time we put up a new video, follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. And make sure to follow my buddy, my friend, the Michael Myers cosplayer, the best one out there. Uh, follow him on Twitter at Michael Myers underscore the shape as well as on TikTok, Michael Myers underscore the shape. We'll see you guys real soon. You guys stay safe. You're moving into